Hey guys, Toyota Land Cruiser Prada LC150 about to replace the wheel bearings. You know, we got them on the shelf ready to go. Ship them out many days a week. Monday, actually Monday's parts day, just remember that. And if you haven't already subscribed, turn the bell on before you forget, do that now. Have a look at this, right? So we're about to change the wheel bearings and we've got videos on how to do this and we say be very careful so you don't damage it. Now, obviously someone's been in here before, that's why it's, we're video documenting for you, for the client, for us, whatever. So someone's been in here before, slammed a hole straight through it and um, they are quite hard to get off if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and then they've tried to silicon it up. Now, we don't keep these caps in stock so maybe it's something that I'm going to start to do. So I'm going to try and see if we can get our hands on a couple. They're about 30 bucks or so each. So it's not cheap little add on there, an extra 70 bucks plus freight, whatever. Um, anyway, look, there's a hole there. So that's not going to be good, is it? So I don't know how new or old this is. We're about to find it when we get the cap off. Let's have a look at the other side and let's get this cap off and we'll come back and see how rusty it is in there and know how long it's been like right, that. So this is the driver's side. See, same thing. They've just smashed the knacker out of it and popped a big hole in there and um, so, so look it'll do the job but there's just no need for it now we've said it in videos before the way I found best is not using a screwdriver or a chisel or anything a wood chisel actually a wood chisel mate can you please grab my wood chisel pull that little red cap bring a hammer over let's get the big hammer I reckon or whichever one you want yeah have you used my chisel like you first time with my wood chisel you have a go let's see how it works for you right you do your things my way I'll do them my way, you do them your way, but let's, you do my way and we'll just demonstrate how hard it is with a wood chisel. So it's already started moving out, right? Beautiful. So we need to turn it and work our way around. I'm not doing nothing, mate, I'm camera. Oh, you're gonna go down there, that's all right, whatever you want. So here we go, you do that, that's good, right? And what you can do then is spin the chisel around and try just try levering with a chisel spun around the other way. Or whatever you want. You know, I'm telling you what to do, but you're doing your own thing. Anyway, one is, look, you can already see the gap there. It's starting to come out. You need to be patient, and you need to work slowly. Now, just stop there. Now, I just want to tell you something. We're just quick. This is like a quick video trying to help you out, right, once again. But the problem we got is you don't try and take the cap off now. What's the problem with taking it off now, right? So that was a trick. We all got fooled, didn't we? Yes, there's a whole rotor and caliper in the way and it needs to come off. So we're going to get the caliper off the way we showed in the video with all the hoses and the clamps so we don't damage it and the rotor. That way it allows us to get different angles to get the cap off because it needs to go this away. Anyway, bada bing, we'll get them off but not before the rotors and the calipers. Mainly wanted to show you the hole in the cap. Okay, so we got them off. We're over at the dirty smash it out workbench. That's what this is, the old dirty smash it out workbench. So we've got some fundraising. Anybody need some uh, fundraising chocolates? Dollar each. Uh, pop down to the Prado Hospital. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, you can see the cap. Someone's, you just can't do it that way. You, why would you do me that way? It said, right? I mean, you know, it's all smashed in at one side. It's like they're throwaways, but you, these are too expensive to throw away. So don't do that. Next problem. Someone's worked on this before. See this seal? This is the seal. We, so obviously, if you don't know, we supply these, already assembled. There's six different genuine components there, all pressed together, ready to go. It's the easy way to do it, long story short. If you want more information, check out the other videos. But it comes with this seal, and the genuine seal that goes at the back here literally is about 70 or 80 bucks worth. I can't remember, to be honest, and the price changes, so I could be wrong, but they're bloody expensive is the part that does matter. The one that goes in between that some people... Don't install, you see that one? They're about $30, and these ones are about 70. That's what I do remember. It's about 100 for each side. Anyway, that's where they get expensive. You've got the bearing, you've got the seals, you've got the O-ring, you've got the bolts, you've got the hub, you've got the whole thing, and then the labour to put it all together professionally, because people can make mistakes with that as well. Point is, this one had a seal, right? That's what it should look like, kind of, sort of like that. And this one didn't. It just had no seal. So... Where that seal's meant to sit, we have to clean up inside the hub, you know, a lot of, you know, manual labor, cleaning it up to get this seal surface on the new seal to seal inside the steering knuckle. And you can see all the mess that this was causing. And this bearing, if it hadn't failed already, 
it was going to fail prematurely. Look at all the, I don't know what all this grease is. Something's been dragging on the back there. Anyway, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do no seal. And there was no O-ring either. See, there's an O-ring there. That's another one of the other components that don't come with the bearing. Right, O-ring. No O-ring, right? Terrible. Let's turn it over and have a look at the other side. On the other side, have a look at the rust and everything. So, you obviously don't want rust getting in here and then going through and could cause problems. Luckily, it didn't get past the nut and inside there was good. And maybe that's going to happen all the time, but maybe it's not. So, there's a reason there's a dust cap and they seal really well, usually, these watertight ones. Now, as I said, I didn't have any in stock, so I've ordered some, so I'm going to have a spare set in stock from now on. But it hasn't been for many years that we found, it was a pair that I found damaged once. They weren't too bad because I'm fussy, I replaced them and I kept them as like spares, haven't used them for like many years. We're going to fit those to this vehicle because they're 95%, they're good enough and we'll put some RTV to be sure because that's our only solution is out of here ASAP, right? But yeah, just look at all the rust. I just want you to compare the mess from it not being sealed properly. Let's have a look at the new ones on the car. So on the passenger side, you can see it's all clean. You know, there's no rust and that's the way it's going to stay. See this black coating here between that and the dust cap? That just seals up awesomely and generally I never see any sort of moisture or anything in here whatsoever, which is the way you want it. Awesome. Anyway, over this side as well, it's all just slowly going back together. The nut's going to go on. You can see it's all clean. And the thing we do with our assemblies is, it might look dodgy, but as I said before, this seal, that's metal pressing over metal. And it seals pretty well, but I'm not 100% sure that it's 100%. So what we do is run our bead of RTV silicon there, and that seals up 100% between there and there. There's no doubt about it. It may be of assistant, maybe it's not, but that's what we do. If there's a little bit extra we can do to make it last longer, then bada bing, that's what we do. Okay, so we've just talked them up to 235 Newton meters and fitting the new split pins just nicely. That's good, I'm happy. And we're going to get these dodgy, half dodgy caps on and just put a tiny bit of RTV to make sure it seals. Sometimes you've got to do the best with what you got. So what we did, like I said, this is a cap that it's not perfect, but it's good enough. I believe it wouldn't have leaked. But just to be sure, to be sure, the RTV silicon, you know, the old cheapest oil leak fix that works. It's just got to be between the end of the cap there and the hub, right? So the thickest ring back there. This cap, you can wipe it clean if you want, but I'm not worried about it. As far as I'm concerned, that doesn't matter. And if you don't like that, then you just wait to get new caps. And then you lightly run a blade along the front of that and just, you know, or you could even just peel it off. It's easy to clean off, whatever. But it sticks well. You can see we've done an awesome job all the way around. You can check that out, right? There's only a little bit there, depending how you're looking at it. Both sides are the same. That's a video. We're done. We're out of here. Wheels are going on. Um, if you got something out of that, please give us the thumbs up. Subscribe. Turn the bell on. That's a butter bing, butter boom. We're out of here. See ya.